The Classic TV Channel is your happy trails to golden oldies television from the 1940s through the formative years of the 1950s and 60s. Enjoy restored TV shows Mickey Rooney Show, Groucho Marx, Trouble with Father, Terry and the Pirates, One Step Beyond, Beverly Hillbillies, Bonanza, The Lucy Show, Dick Van Dyke, Annie Oakley, Ozzie and Harriet, The Howdy Doody Show, and many, many more. Binge your night away. <clears throat> so return with us now to those golden days of yesteryear. number one in the life of Elizabeth occurred because she'd been reading too many detective stories. You know, the stories where you become familiar with the technical phrases, but you don't know what you're talking about? The only difference is Elizabeth talks about it. Elizabeth, how are you tonight? What's the name of the book? You're picking something up. A case? You're counting your feet? Oh, counterfeit. <laughs> Sounds like you're not well, Elizabeth. Sounds like ill, the case of the counterfeit bill. Oh. Boy, that was a tough one. Say, why don't you wake Alvin up? We can't watch you read all night. Alvin. <laughs> Hey, you told me to wake you up at 9.30. Come on, Alvin. Come on. Wake up. Come on, wake up. Ah! Did you get his number? His number? 11D. Elizabeth, what are my feet doing up that high? What's the matter, Pocahontas? Aren't you sure what you're wearing under that blanket? <laughs> Did you yell just now, or was I dreaming? I yelled. I thought for a minute the foot bone wasn't connected to the ankle bone. <laughs> Here you are. Paddle upstream in this and see the great white father. Where's my other shoe, is it? It just floated past carrying a war party of 14 Chippewas. <laughs> Elizabeth, if you're being funny, very good. Hey, what time is it? It's 9.30. Never mind the shoe, sweetie. Come on over here and let me, let me read you part of this story. <laughs> it's on my foot. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, what's the story about, honey? Well, it's all about this fellow who was was booked on an, on 803, see? Even though he'd committed a 521, and the, the squad car picked him up on a 611. So wait a minute. I don't know these terms like you do. You say they picked him up on a 611? They sure did. What's that? That's grand larceny. Even though he'd committed a 521. How about that? What's a 521? Arson. And they booked him on a what? On an 803. Can you imagine that? Uh, what's an 803? Double parking. <laughs> hey, wait, wait, wait. Well, don't read me the story from the middle of the book. Start at the beginning. Well, I've told you what's happened up until now. Uh, you mean it took him a whole half a book to, to pick this guy up on a double parking charge? Well, it sure did. He's got a clever lawyer. <laughs> As he walked into the courtroom... Who's he? Private Eye. I, yeah, well, what's his name? That's it. Private Eye. He's a crook. His name is Private Eye? Well, certainly. Listen to this. How do you spell it? T-H-I-S. No, I mean, how do you spell his last name? I-E-Y-E. -E. I. Well, what's wrong with that? A lot of people are named O'Hare. His last name was I, so his parents named him Private Eye. I think this author is stupid. His parents didn't name him Private Eye. Then why do they call him Private Eye? You... He's in the Army. <laughs> As he walked into the courtroom, I caught Eye's eye. Elizabeth, what's the number for pickpocket? 
106, why? Did you 106 my pockets while I was asleep? <laughs> Lucky quarter's gone. Well, it probably dropped out of your pocket when you were doing the, the Pocahontas act over here. I don't think so. Did you look back at these cushions? No, I didn't. That's probably where it is. I find like more little goodies down here. Here it is. Oh, thanks. Let me have it. Ellen, this quarter has two heads. Sure. <laughs> I win more money that way. <laughs> don't look at me like that. I was only kidding. Well, that's the same as a 902, Alvin. I told you that I was only kidding. It's just for good luck, honest. Well, don't scare me like that. <laughs> Come on. I'll read you the rest of the yeah. story. Hey, wait a minute. And my lead nickel is missing. <laughs> there she is. A lead nickel? Sure. <laughs> it's just a slug. When we were kids, we used to put them in the... <laughs> machines and the candy. <laughs> well, gee, honey, we were only kids. I never have liked this dishonest streak in you, Ellen. <laughs> dishonest. I've watched you in self-service gas stations. You always go just a little over the mark. Everybody does. I remember on one of our very first dates, I remember you had us both balancing on the scale so we could get our weight for the same thing. Look, if this slug bothers you, take a look at this. Hmm. Alvin, do you realize that's how criminals get their start? What's this? Counterfeit dollar bill. Take a look at it. A 461? It's printed in 1928. Where did you get that? I don't know. I changed a five and it was on the change. This is serious. Where did you get that bill? Hey, wait a minute. What is this? Don't you know you're supposed to report those bills the minute you get them? Well, sure, but, but honey, this isn't that type Alvin, of... Alvin, oh. you're hiding something from me. No, I'm not. <laughs> well, then why can't you remember where you changed the bill? You don't get that many five-dollar bills. <laughs> wait, must have been at lunch. That's right, the little Italian restaurant on 8th Street. <laughs> What's the matter? Alvin, that restaurant's been closed for three weeks. Oh, I remember now, honey. The cigar stand. It's no use. Honest, honey, I know that's where it was. I remember now. Darling, darling, yeah. listen to me. Huh? There's something I want you to know. No matter what you've done, no matter what it is, I'll, I'll stand by it. Oh, goodness. Don't be so dramatic. Now I know what you've been doing when you say you're down in the basement working on model boats. What? You're printing these. And I hate to criticize your work, Alvin, but that is the worst picture of George Washington I've ever seen. Take another look at it. Queen Victoria. Uh-huh. It's a counterfeit Canadian bill. Oh. Alvin? Hmm? I'd like to report a one, two, three... What's that? A very embarrassed woman. <laughs> I shall leave you at this point, Elizabeth. Why? Where are you going? I'm going out to burn this book. I'll be back. <laughs> Bye. Elizabeth, aren't you ashamed? The number two in the life of Elizabeth occurred because her nerves were getting on her nerves. Do you think you've been nervous at one time or another? Not like Elizabeth on the eve of her speech at the women's club. Why, even her nervous breakdown was having a nervous breakdown. Drying paper towels? <laughs> I've got a little coffee on my notes. Oh, that ought to put a little life in your speech. <laughs> Calvin, would you just please go in the other room with your little jokes? I, I've got big trouble. Well, I wonder why you were hiding out here. Is there anything I can do to help, honey? Not unless you want to perform for me at the women's club. <laughs> Don't tell me that you're nervous. I've never been so scared in my whole life. Yeah. I, I not only have to give a speech, I have to sing that ridiculous song. All by yourself? No such luck. 
Mrs. Knuckles Harrigan will be at the piano. Well, at least she'll have some company, but... I said she'd be at the piano. She can't play. Maybe it's not as bad as it sounds. Look, let's take the whole thing from the beginning. Now, how does the meeting start? Well, first of all, Mrs. Williams smashes the table with her gavel. And then what happens? And then Knuckles Harrigan smashes the national anthem with her piano. <laughs> Then what? Then they introduce me and I and I have to sing that stupid song. Good, let's hear it. It wouldn't be so bad, but I hear what? The song. Oh no. Oh yes. Oh no. Elizabeth, now wait a minute. You're gonna have to do this whole thing tomorrow. Let me help you now. Now, where will you be sitting when they introduce you? Alvin, please, no, I, I well uh, that's just the trouble. I have to make an entrance. Well, good. Come on, we'll make the entrance right now. Not Alvin, please. Elizabeth, please. Uh, listen, uh, listen to you Alvin. You go in the other room. Please, you listen, listen to the Harry Ratbone show. Would you listen to me? Now, how many women are in the club? 300. All righty, now. They're all friends of yours. And they're looking at you with smiles on their faces. Now, wait a minute. Now, when you walk out <laughs> into the stage, what are you going to see? 300 what? Cats. Oh, for goodness sake, stand here and make your entrance now, will you? Will you make your entrance? All righty. Now, you've already been introduced, and I'm Mrs. Harrigan. Clunkety, clunkety, clunk. All right, enter. I said, enter, Elizabeth. Elizabeth! Elizabeth, come back here. Elizabeth, I see you hiding in that broom closet. <laughs> All of the sissies. What's the big idea, honey, of running all the way back there? Well, I have to make a long entrance. Well, you're going to make a short entrance, then. Right here. Smiling faces. Hold it. Oh. All right, now you've already been introduced. Ah. Clunkety, clunkety, clunk. All right, throw your shoulders back and make a real entrance. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth, will you get back there and make an entrance? I'm going to play introduction once more. Clunkety, clunkety, clunk. You know something? You play better than she does. <laughs> Would you please enter? Clumpety, clumpety, clunk. That's better. Well, why don't you sing? I don't know what key you're in. <laughs> Honey, please sing the song. It can't be that bad, will you now? Where do you hear it? Well, they've all heard it before, haven't they? I guess you're right. See? You <laughs> promise you won't laugh. Of course I promise. Righty? Here we go. <laughs> hail, hail, hail to the women's club across the street from the jail. Long may the women's club rain, rain, rain. Hail, all hail. Isn't that ridiculous, Alvin? It sounds like a weathery pit. Alvin, you're left. Yes, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. One line did strike me as a little odd. What? That one about across the street from the jail. Why across the street from the jail? Well, there's, a, there's another women's club right next door to the jail. Oh. All right, now, the song is over. What happened? Come to think of it, there's a disreputable branch right in the jail. Oh, now, look, I don't believe it. Now, look, what happens next? You've sung the song. I'm still waiting for Knuckles Harrigan to finish. She's playing the introduction. All right, now, what are you going to speak about? Well, I don't know. I'll, I'll think of something. Well, you should think of it. Well, I thought you had it all written out. Well, I... Oh. I can't make it out. What does it say? Read it. Good and loud. Project now. Go ahead. Blue cotton four times, yellow taffeta twice, red jersey three times, blue cotton with the white bolero twice. Wait a minute, is this your speech? That's a list of the dresses I've worn to the women's club. Alvin, they've seen every dress I own. Blue cotton four times, yellow taffeta two times, red jersey three times. Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. White. I get it. You do? Sure, if we hurry, we can get to the dress shop, buy you a new outfit. It'll calm your nerves, right? Huh? 
Well, that's true, but I never would have dreamed of mentioning this. Honey, believe me, you deserve it. Come on, I'll get the car keys. Uh, here they are. Oh, well, I'll get my top coat. Eight in the car. You wouldn't have dreamed of asking me. <laughs> you won't. It's right in your coat pocket. Oh, yeah, let's duck out the back door. Say, who wrote the song, Elizabeth? Well, I wrote it. I wanted to change it. Incident number three in the life of Elizabeth occurred on one of those Sundays when everybody on the block was out front mowing the lawns or planting flowers or washing their cars. Elizabeth and Alvin are undoubtedly doing the same thing. <laughs> Elizabeth, where are you, honey? Here I am. Alvin? Alvin? Elizabeth? Honey? Are you out here? Elizabeth? Honey? Elizabeth? Elizabeth, where are you? Elizabeth? Here I am. Elizabeth, I can't see you any place. Here I am. Oh, have you oh. seen Elizabeth? Oh, no. Just say that again. You look like a goldfish. No. Oh. <laughs> the whole neighborhood's watching. Uh, <laughs> Hi, Lillian. Hi, Mrs. Stimson. <clears throat> My head got caught between Alvin's hands. I don't. Hi, Jack. Elizabeth, get your head out of the window. This is very embarrassing. <laughs> Elizabeth, where are you? Elizabeth? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, everybody. Alvin, don't jump. I'm right here. <laughs> you jump. Hi, Lillian. <laughs> <laughs> You've been sneaking up behind me like that, what do you think? <laughs> Hi. Alvin, say hello to Mrs. Skinridge. For goodness sake, will you act natural? Everybody's watching. Well, I already said hello to her. <laughs> say it again. Hi, Miss Skinridge. Car looks nice, Jack. <clears throat> He's pretending to wash that car. He hasn't taken his eyes off of us once. Neither has she. What's Lillian doing? Car looks nice. Um, she's called Gilbert out, and they're both watching. <laughs> Alvin, for goodness sake, try to act natural. You look like a thief. Maybe I better move along or something. I said uh, act natural. Oh. <laughs> Come on, let, let's sit down. They can't keep this up forever. <laughs> <laughs> look who's talking about acting natural. You look like you're modeling lawn furniture. Car looks nice. <laughs> I don't start anything. Mrs. Skimmage reads lips. She's gone. Well, so is he. So is Lillian. Oh, that's a relief. I've never been so embarrassed in my whole life. <laughs> well, it still kind of makes me sore. I don't see why we should apologize to the whole block just because we want to have a little fun. Yeah, it's easy for you to say. You have to see them once a week. I see them every day. Well, I still say that's no reason why they should... Wasn't that Moosey Moosefield that just went by? Yeah, it might have been at that. I thought he had a Stanley steamer. No. Oh, in that last letter he wrote you, he said he traded that in on, on the Apperson Jack Rabbit. Don't you remember? Mm. Let's go in. Why? All the neighbors have to see is a character like Moosey. I am through apologizing to the neighbors. Moosey doesn't come down out of the mountains very often, and when he does, the least we can possibly... What do you go around the block for? It's those two-wheel brakes. <laughs> Hi, <Hiya>, kids! <laughs> Hi, Mrs. Skinridge. Hi, Lillian. Hi, that's nice. Well, thanks. I got rid of the Stanley steamer, ran out of coal. <laughs> Good to see you, Moosey. Come on, let's go in the house where it's nice and cool. Oh, no, this will be fine. I prefer the outdoors. It ain't so stuffy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let, let, let. Uh, Moosey, hey, Moosey, why did you bring the guitar? Well, I'm fixing to go on television, Alvin. Oh. <laughs> I figured maybe you kids could help me out. We'd rather help you in, Moosey. Elizabeth. Go on, Moosey. <laughs> well, I composed some tunes. And who's that ugly critter with her head hanging over the paper? <laughs> what kind of tunes? Mind if I pig a rock at her. Oh, Alvin. Uh, uh, tell us about the tunes, Moosey. <laughs> what tunes? 
Well, you oh, the tune! Yes, sir. Say, <laughs> remember the time old Joe Cronkite and you and me, we oh, went fishing yeah. and we started to sing? Uh, huh? Mostly, mostly. What do you mean, tell about Joe Cronkite? <laughs> Yeah, Never mind about Joe Cronkite. Oh, thanks, Elizabeth. Uh, uh, let's see. Well, tell us about Joe Cronkite. <laughs> right, let's, let's hear the song. Okay. See what you think of this. About a tune the guitar. Okay. <laughs> a little bit on the. Nothing radical, just all six strings. <laughs> How's that? Oh, that's much better. Hey, let's go in. This here's a romantic song. <laughs> Lay man in a pig pen all covered with mud. <laughs> Not so loud, Lucy. I thought you said it was romantic. Well, it is. It's about two pigs in love. Tell you what. I'll sing you a cowboy song instead. Friend of Alvin. <laughs> don't bury me, that's what I said. Don't bury me, don't bury me, don't bury me, cause I ain't dead. Don't buy me a pup, cause I still got a breath that's hot. Not only that, my girl named Dot will tie the knot. What means a lot? Oh, I forgot I'd go to pot if I was shot in front of Dot. No matter what, don't oh, bury me not. Oh, bury Oh, bury me not. Not in front of Dot. Oh, if you want to. unless you want to. He's very accommodating. <laughs> you are real skittish today, Elizabeth. Hey, if that old buzzard over there is bothering you, I'll get shot of her. Oh, Lucy. Lucy. Lucy, no. No, no. <laughs> Lucy, a little while ago, Alvin and I were out here clowning around, and, and all the neighbors started to watch. She's afraid that if we rehearse your song on the front porch, that they'll gossip. Look, maybe we'd better go in. Well, ain't nothing to worry about. I I'll sing softer. Oh. That isn't the problem. Sing better. Huh? I, I, maybe a better. <clears throat> Here's a pretty one. <laughs> oh, coyote, oh, coyote, I wondered so long. Why do you sing this here unhappy song? I'll <laughs> That was very pretty. You got something quieter? You like that, Elizabeth? It was delightful. <laughs> I can't think of a name for it. Why don't you call it the uh, coyote went wooing? By <laughs> Jing, that's a slapper! And <laughs> 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 hey, what you whispering about? Uh, nothing. Nothing. What else have you got, Moosey? I got one about a train. Train. <laughs> Oh, train, oh, train, ka-plow, ka-pling. Ka-plow, <laughs> ka-pling? Well, sometimes you gotta force a rhyme, Elizabeth. <laughs> oh, train, oh, train, ka-plow, ka-pling. Tell me, please tell me why you always sing. Ow! 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 Alvin, he's gonna start the dog howling. Oh, Oh, train, oh, train, ka-ploon, ka-plang. Tell me, oh, tell me why you always sang. Ow! 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 That's the police. Uh, I'll get it. No, I'll get it. You no. stay with me. No, honey, I'll get it. No, please, you're singing me. Well, I know. No. I'll stay. Your phone's ringing, Elizabeth. I know it. And lucky Alvin went to answer it. You want to sing a duet with me? Sure. What difference does it make now? Now, you just repeat after me like this here. <laughs> 
the robin. The robin. Sang sweet. Sang sweet. But he came. But he came. Compete. Compete. With the owl. Who sings a hoo, a hoo, a hoo, a hoo, a hoo, a hoo, a hoo. How many of us go to jail? That was Mrs. Skinridge. She says everyone's gathering in her yard for a barbecue. Nobody's going to barbecue Moosey. But she wants us to come and bring our singing cowboy friend with us. Well, we can do our duet. Uh, Moosey and Elizabeth, uh, fancy songs and clatter. I'll get the trombone. I'll get the trombone. Wait, I'll get the trombone. No, you're not going to get the trombone. Hey, it's your cowboy boots, honey. We can... Say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, everybody. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. I'll do that. Now, here to say goodbye to you is the lovely star of our show, Betty White. Thank you, Jack, and thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you so much. Elizabeth said to tell you the party was a huge success, and, and Moosey was the hit of the entire afternoon, till somebody tuned his guitar. <laughs> Once more, we'll see you again. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> Thank you.